One of the great things about using a programming language like Python is the fact that there are so many open source projects out there with code that you can import and use in your own code base. But you'd be surprised that one of my favorite packages is actually quite simple, but makes my life so much easier. My name is Rob. I make YouTube videos about coding in Python, machine learning, and data science. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you about the package TQDM. TQDM is a package that lets you see the progress of your code as it's running through loops. As a data scientist, this is especially helpful because some of the processes that you're running on large data sets can take a while and it's great to see how much longer you have to wait until the code is done executing. But as I'll show you in this video, there's much more to it than just it being a simple progress bar. If you enjoy this video, please consider liking and subscribing, checking out my other YouTube videos or following me on Twitch where I stream live coding. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so here we are in a Jupyter Notebook, and I'm just gonna take you through what TQDM is, some of the functionalities it has, and why it's so awesome. So we're gonna start by doing some imports. As always, I um, have the TQDM logo here at the top too, which I think is nice. We're gonna import pandas as pd, numpy. We're gonna import sleep. This will let us try some loops out where we add some pause time each time it loops through. And of course, we're learning about TQDM. So from TQDM, we're gonna import TQDM. And also we're gonna import T range. Okay, so for here we're just gonna make some fake data to run our loops over to show how TQDM works. There we go, and if we do a head on this data frame, we can just see that it's uh, different dogs and smells, and the length of this is 50,000. So, getting into TQDM, why is it so great? Let's say we're looping through each of these dogs, and we're gonna say for dog in dogs, and then we'll sleep for half a second. This is running right now. It's going through all the list of dogs, and we have no idea how long it's taking or how far the progress is of this loop. This is a piece of code you would run very often in Python, especially in data science applications where it's running for a while and you have no idea how long it's gonna take. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that. And let's make this value much smaller so it actually doesn't take a while. And all we have to do is wrap dogs in TQDM, which we imported above. And the beautiful thing is now we see a progress bar that goes across as we run. And that's the biggest takeaway from this is that TQDM is just awesome, works out of the box, it's well supported, has great documentation, and it lets you quickly add these progress bars to your code. So if you remember before I imported T range, Range just lets us do a range of numbers for I in range 50. Let's sleep for 0.1 seconds and then let's print done. Here with this, we don't know how long it's taking or how long it's going to take, but we do know when it's done. We can replace this range with T range and now we have a progress bar going across as the code is running. You can see when I made the text size smaller, you could see the whole uh, range of it looping through each of the values in these 50. You can see the total progress time that has been taken so far, the estimated time remaining here, and then the average amount of time it's taking per iteration. This is very, very helpful. Now, one thing to note is that TQDM works well automatically when you have an object that you're passing it that has a length. So our dogs array, we has a length. If you run that function on it, you can see that as a length of 50,000. But let's say that we didn't know the length or if this was coming from a generator that may have potential different lengths, we can actually set the length here manually by doing for dog in TQDM dogs with the total value being, let's actually make it the wrong number. Let's make it 50,001 and we'll do our sleep time. So now it's actually going out of 50,001 and this will be useful for you. I use this a lot when the data that I'm reading in may be 
a bunch of files or something else that we don't know the final length of, or maybe we do and we could estimate, you can put it here in the total. We don't necessarily need to wrap the thing that we're running TQDM on with TQDM. We could create a TQDM object itself and increment it manually. And this can be useful for situations like a while loop where you're not sure exactly when it's gonna end. And the way we do this is by creating this TQDM object like this. Let's give it a total of 50,000 that we know the lengths are. And let's say we'll loop through our smells. So for S in smell, and all we have to do is somewhere in our code here, write pbar update, and we'll update this by one. And then we'll put a sleep here just to, so we can see the progress as it goes by. And at the end, you're gonna wanna make sure you close this pbar object. And you can see it looping through just like we did before. Now some more functionality that you have with TQDM is adding a description and changing this unit type. So if you wanna keep track of the TQDM bar and what it's keeping progress, you can do that pretty easily. So let's say for dog and dogs, oh, in TQDM dogs, and let's get a description using descript dog counter. And the unit, we'll call this barks. And now when we run this, we can see it's called dog counter here. And it's doing the time it takes per bark per second. Now, since we can add a description to each progress bar, we can actually nest the progress bars within each other. It can get kind of messy, but it's nice to see if you have multiple things you want to progress over. So let's start out by going uh, for dog in TQDM dogs. And let's only look at the first five with a description of dog counter with a total of five. And then for S in smell, and do the first two with a description of smell counter with a total of two. And we have to wrap this in TQDM, of course. And we'll give it a sleep time of 0 0.1 so we can see it going through. And you can see that the dog counter is counting up as well as the multiple smell counters each time it loops through. So now that we know we can use the description here, like setting the name of the counter, we can actually make that description dynamic. And the way that we do that is making our p-bar like earlier. Let's go through TQDM with the dogs object, just the first 10. And then we'll say for dog in this progress bar, we'll sleep for half a second, and then we'll update the p-bar set description as, um, let's make this an F string that says processing and then the name of the dog that it's processing. So now you can see that as it goes through, it says for the description, the different item in that list that it's processing. We can control the size of this progress bar too and how much space it takes up here horizontally. And the way we do that is by setting the number of columns. So let's do for I in TQDM, TQDM range and make the number of columns and do a pass on that. So you can see now here that the size of this is much smaller than it was above. This might be nice depending on the display size you have. If we do this again with the even smaller size, we'll actually remove the time stats. So now here we only have a progress bar. And if we make it even less, it'll only show the percentage. So let's make this four. Now, maybe for some reason you wanna change the amount of time that the TQDM updates to the screen, and we can set that by setting the interval that it displays. Let's say we're looping for the through the dogs. We can set the min interval uh, to be something like one. Now, my, by default, the min interval is set to 0.1 seconds uh, that it displays but this will just have it only update it every one second. And then we'll do a sleep. Now you can see it only updates every one second. Similarly, we can take this and put the max interval. We could set this to something like 100. We can see in the docs that the maximum progress display update interval is 10 per second. Now, one thing that happens a lot because I like to use TQDM in so much of my code, but when I'm 
debugging it, it's nice, but eventually you may want to turn it off. And that's a, you're able to do that too just by adding this disable command. And let's say we have something called debug, which we might have set up in a config. And we want to say true to say we're debugging right now. And then we just connect, put a disable equals true or false. If we say disable is false, this will show the progress bar. And if we say disable true, it's not gonna show the progress bar as it's running. So we can just say not debug, and now it will only show the progress bar when we're in debug mode. Now, one of my favorite things is that TQDM actually works with pandas. When you're running something like an apply statement on a data frame, it can be uh, tough to know exactly how long it's taking, but pandas makes that fairly simple. All we have to do is run tqdm.pandas and we can add a description here called my bar. And then when we take our data frame, so let's take the data frame that we did above. And the way we would normally do it is by a apply method, but we're gonna run progress apply instead, which will give us this progress bar. And let's do lambda row. We'll take that smell row. We'll multiply it by, we'll square it and we'll make sure we run it on the axis is equal to one. There we go, we have a progress bar and um, it's giving us our output here, but we can run that again. Progress bar of running it. This is really handy when running on huge pandas data frames. And we can do this also on group by applies. So let's make a, just so the output goes somewhere and do a df group by the dog will progress apply the same thing we did above. And now we have a group by applied output here with our progress bar showing. TQDM also has a special notebook interface that looks a lot different than say if you're running this code in a script by instead of importing from TQDM, just importing from TQDM notebook importing tqdm so to show how that looks we're going to take one of our earlier examples and run it with this notebook tqdm you can see that the color is blue as it's running it's green when it completes and it otherwise shows the same iterations but it's a little bit more dynamic now one of the other nice things about the tqdm in the notebook version is that if the code does fail somewhere in your loop this progress bar will show as red. And let's give that example. So we're gonna make a counter, which equals zero. And then we're gonna go loop over each dog in TQDM dogs. If the dog equals beagle, we'll increment our counter. And if the counter equals 10,000, then we'll break. So we can show example of this breaking. And you can see after uh, 30,000 iterations, it broke, the progress bar shows red, so you can easily see that the code is broke at some point. Now there is something called TQDM auto, and that'll automatically detect if you're in a notebook, and if so, use the notebook version of TQDM. And that's nice because you can take that same code and put it in a script and it will not have issues with trying to use TQDM for the notebook version. So you just use from tqdm.auto, import TQDM, and that'll work pretty well. I find myself using it explicitly more often than not, but TQDM audio is out there to use. Now I will say that TQDM is really great because it has good documentation. So you can read those on their website or you can run the help on TQDM and read some of the basic details of what we went over here today when you're using it yourself if you wanna do something more custom. So that was a quick overview of one of my favorite packages called TQDM. It adds a progress bar to your code and will help you to be able to understand how long it's taking to execute and I just really love it a lot. I hope you all do too. Please let me know in the comments below if you liked the video and if you have any suggestions for future videos. And I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye.